Whether you love them or not, it's likely that Disney has been a big part of your childhood. From their memorable 2D movies to their critically acclaimed 3D films with Pixar, a ton of theories have been brought up trying to explain aspects of the Disney universe, some of which are just too compelling to ignore. So today, we're going to count down the most interesting Disney conspiracy theories. Keep in mind that we didn't come up with any of these theories, they're just theories and nothing more. Also we're going to be sticking to just Disney and Pixar films. With that being said, hold on to your childhoods. This is the Top 20 Disney Movie Theories. The Toy Story Divorce Theory This theory by Jess Nevins explains that Andy's parents are going through a divorce during the first Toy Story movie. Woody and Buzz are both authority figures someone heroic and self-righteous for Andy to look up to. This would explain why we can see that Andy's mom has no wedding ring on her finger, or why Andy's family is moving to a smaller house in the first place, without his father's financial support. Wally Doomed Earth The story of Wally tells the tale of an inhabitable Earth that has caused humanity to move into space and send robots to clean their home planet. Several years later, the last robot around is Wally. -E. Why is that? If robots inhabited the Earth to clean it, and the last remaining one is Wally, -E, while there is still all the junk around, how could this have happened? One theory on Reddit claims that Wally -E was the one who destroyed all the other robots. This would explain why he's able to just desecrate the remains of his fellow robots, despite being a being clearly capable of pain and emotion. Maybe this pain and emotion caused him to overthink his own mission. The robot's mission were to gather the trash and compact it, while Wally -E would rather keep the junk to himself. An error in his programming, this could have caused him to destroy other robots so he could keep more artifacts for himself. The Life of Cars Many theories have been brought up trying to answer some of the questions of the Cars universe and how it works. For example, do cars grow up? There are some fully grown adult cars kid cars, and even baby cars out there, but most evidence is hardly any. Do cars have organs? We all know that cars need a motor, battery, radiator, and all the typical components needed for it to work, but we also see that Lightning McQueen has a tongue and even teeth. There's also early concept artwork of cars showing the anatomy of Lightning McQueen, so we know it exists, just not how it works. Is the motor vital for a car's life? In a deleted scene, we see Lenny McQueen getting a motor transplant into a steamroller so he can repair the street. Some theorists see this as evidence for the motor being either the brain or the heart of the car's body and is necessary for the car to live. When does Aladdin take place? There's a theory floating around that Aladdin actually takes place in the future. Evidence includes a scene where the genie calls Aladdin's clothes so 3rd century. For a genie that was supposedly locked up in the lamp for 10,000 years, there's no way he could know what the 3rd century was like. The genie is also aware of modern pop culture references like being able to pull off a Jack Nicholson impression. One could say that this is just the genie being silly and nothing to take too seriously, but for Disney movies, pop culture references are very uncommon. Most of their films are very modern and timeless. Jane and Belle In Tarzan, there's a scene where the characters are drumming on the same set of pots from Beauty and the Beast. Some say it's just an easter egg, but it's always fun to speculate. The theory is that the tea set was handed down from generation to generation because Jane from Tarzan and Belle from Beauty and the Beast are related. This would explain their similar features, similar dresses, similar interest in animalistic men, and their interest in helping these men become more proper and civilized. Monsters Inc. and the Bubonic Plague In Monsters Inc., the world is inhabited entirely by monsters who use the screams of children as renewable energy. 
The only problem is that the monsters believe that humans are entirely toxic and are actually more afraid of them than the children are of the monsters. But why would monsters think that of humans in the first place? Remember that one scene where there was a human sock found on that one monster's fur? The special forces came busting through the windows, vaporizing the sock and shaving the fur. Well, why would they shave the fur? Because of the bubonic plague. Monsters Inc. is a lot more advanced than we are, so it can be assumed that the monsters have been collecting screams for a long time, maybe even since the Dark Ages when the plague was around. The plague was spread mainly through fleas. No fur equals no fleas, and therefore no plague. Aladdin, the genie and the merchant. In the beginning of Aladdin, we see a lonely merchant roaming through the desert who will tell us the story of Aladdin's magic lamp. The movie then starts, and we see Aladdin finding the magic lamp with three wishes, using the last wish to free the genie within the lamp. Seems pretty straightforward, the genie and the merchant are one and the same. This would explain why the merchant has the magic lamp to begin with. Not only do they both look similar, and they're both voiced by Robin Williams, but they are the only two characters in the whole movie with four fingers. Snow White Theory The story of Snow White is symbolic representation of the seven stages of cocaine. According to the theorists, the dwarves each personally represent a symptom in the stages of addiction, such as dopey, sneezy, and grumpy. Even the name Snow White is a moniker for cocaine. Another theory is that the evil queen in Snow White is Tangled's mother, Gothel. Both look alike, both have daggers, and both are obsessed with beauty and staying young. Toy Story and the Walking Dead The plot of the Toy Story movies and the Walking Dead series are remarkably similar, demonstrated by this easy to follow picture. Did the show's creator really base the plot of the Walking Dead around the Toy Story? Let's take a look at some of the evidence. The hero is a sheriff. He's the occasionally grumpy leader of a group of misfits, and has a kid he loves more than life itself. His best friend is a hyper macho officer of the law. But this kid grows fond of the hero's best friend. Stay away from my kid. They eventually come to blows beneath a truck. The hero kills his best friend. All this while being overwhelmed by armies of horribly disfigured, shambling corpses, somebody's poisoned the water hole, and more. That was just the first Toy Story movie. At the end of the video, take a look at all the coincidences. It's actually pretty crazy. The link will be in the description below. The Incredibles and Jack-Jack Near the end of the film, Jack-Jack is revealed to be the most powerful super there is, being able to transform and control a wide variety of powers at will. This theory believes that every super goes through this random surge of powers during the developing baby years. Once they're old enough, their powers will become more coherent and latch on to a single power that relates to their personality, much like the other Incredibles. Dash is impulsive, so he's fast and Violet is shy, so she's invisible, and so on. The Reddit user who made the theory compares Jack-Jack to a stem cell, saying that Jack-Jack will eventually develop into one specific power as he matures. While he's still young and developing, his powers are also still young and developing, thus lies the potential of it becoming, well, any superpower. Who Framed Roger Rabbit is about segregation. This theory states that the plot of Who Framed Roger Rabbit is a metaphor for the segregation of blacks in Los Angeles. The story takes place in 1947, where whites and blacks must be separated by local laws. The villain, Judge Doom, wants the Toons out of their home so he can build a freeway for the wealthy humans. This is called gentrification, a real-life issue going on in Los Angeles right now. Most of the Toons are performers, which was, at the time, the only job for black people. Even the word Toon seemed like a racial slur for the Toons of Toontown. Toy Story 3 and the Holocaust Film critic Jordan Hoffman believes that Toy Story 3 is an allegory to the Holocaust. Andy leaving for college represents the beginning of World War II, which is why Woody and his friends hide in the attic, like Anne Frank. After being sent to Sunnyside Daycare, which is meant to represent concentration camps, 
The toys manage to escape, but end up heading straight for an incinerator. The toys are saved by assumingly the allies, and relocate to a new place with many of their own kind. Annie's mom owned Jesse. In Toy Story 2, we learned that Jesse was once owned by a girl named Emily, but once she started getting older, she gave Jesse away. During Jesse's flashback of Emily, we see a red cowboy hat on her bed. We also see that she began to grow up sometime during the 70s, which would be the perfect age for Emily to be Annie's mom today. It's also supported by the fact that Andy is now wearing a similar red cowboy hat that Emily once owned, so one can assume that maybe Andy's mom gave her son the red hat? And it just so happens that Jesse is back with Emily and her son, Andy. The Frozen Theory One of the most popular Disney theories is that Frozen, Tangled, and The Little Mermaid are all connected. It starts with this screenshot of Flynn and Rapunzel after Rapunzel cut off her golden hair. An easter egg? Yeah, maybe, but now we know that they're in the same universe. What makes it more convincing is that Elsa and Anna's parents were on a ship that crashed and sank in the middle of the ocean. It's assumed that they were going to Flynn and Rapunzel's wedding. The main plot of Frozen then takes place three years later. Interesting, because Frozen was released almost exactly three years after Tangled. The ship on the other hand looks very similar to the ship found in The Little Mermaid. This would also make sense geographically given the locations of each film. Mufasa indirectly causes the drought. There are certainly a lot of otherworldly plot points used in these Disney films, but this theory suggests a big one in The Lion King. The theory goes like this. While staring at the night sky, Mufasa tells Simba earlier on in the film that the great kings of the past look down on us from those stars. However, Mufasa's death was an accident, and it wasn't his time to go, so his soul wandered around until it was pure enough to move on. And this happens through correcting the wrong Scar has done. First, Mufasa causes the sickening drought to punish Scar for his betrayal. This also makes Nala search farther for food, which will eventually lead her to Simba, which will cause him to come back home. However, Simba wants to stay with Timon and Pumbaa, so Mufasa insists on the help of his old loyal baboon Rafiki. He then appears to Simba in the clouds to remind him who he is, the rightful king. It's worth mentioning that this is not how the kings of the past usually reveal themselves, according to Rafiki. This supports the idea that Mufasa is still not at peace because Scar hasn't been stopped. Once Scar is overthrown and Simba becomes the rightful king, the drought ends with rain and balance is restored in Pride Rock and in Mufasa. The Finding Nemo Theory The entire movie is an allegory of Marlon's journey through the five stages of grief after the tragic loss of his family, including Nemo. Finding Nemo is in fact the tale of a psychologically damaged clownfish who must go on a personal journey as he tries to overcome the pain and fear caused by the loss of his family, says Thorne Ho, the creator of this theory. After his tragic loss, the emotional baggage became too much for Marlon, believing that the whole thing was not a freak accident but rather his own fault. The sharks help him realize that even things that appear to be threats may not be, so worrying about every little possible danger is cumbersome. The sea turtles help him realize that he can't be expected to remain in control of every aspect of life. Dory's short-term memory loss requires her to live moment to moment, thus teaching Marlin that he's been holding on to the memory of his loss for far too long and he must move on. Up is imaginary. A Pinterest user proposed that Carl from the movie Up actually died in his sleep after hearing that he had to leave his house. The entire movie symbolizes his journey into the afterlife and towards heaven. Paradise Falls represents heaven where Carl and Ellie will be happy once again together. Russell is his guardian angel trying to help a senior citizen in any way so he can receive his final badge or his wings. Some theorists even believe that Russell represents the child Carl and Ellie always wanted but never could have. His house represents his attachment to the physical world, a sort of purgatory. He's not in heaven yet, but he's ready to leave and see Ellie once a certain mission is done. This theory is, of course, without problems and holes, like the fact that Carl and Russell both arrive back in the city near the end of the movie but it's a personal favorite of mine that I wanted to share.
Disney mothers. Parents have never been a central part of most Disney stories, either being killed off or just not important. Some mothers are even seen as the evil queen in comparison to the pure of heart princess. Well, why is that? Disney producer Don Han has his two theories on why there are rarely any parents in Disney stories. One theory simply says that Disney movies are about growing up and accepting responsibility. In a 90 minute movie, there just might not be room for parents. Another theory has to do with Walt Disney's past. In the early 1940s, Walt Disney was able to live every kid's dream and buy his parents a house. However, there was a leaked furnace in the house and his mother soon died from it. His father became ill and was rushed to the hospital. Walt Disney felt personally responsible for the death of his own parents. And this could influence his movies onwards. The Disney Theory Disney movies are full of little hints and easter eggs to past Disney films, as if the creators want us to believe that they exist in the same universe. This long theory explains that 30 of Disney's own most popular movies exist in the same universe, such as The Princess and the Frog, Lilo and Stitch, Aladdin, and many others. I won't go too much into detail, as it is a rather long theory, but for a taste of it, the beginning of the Disney timeline starts with The Lion King, followed by Hercules, and then The Hunchback of Notre Dame. While the theory is based mostly on just easter eggs and is a lot more linear than the Pixar theory, it's still a fascinating read that I definitely recommend. The Pixar Theory In what has to be one of the biggest Disney conspiracy theories, the Pixar Theory is one that has actually been around for a long time. Up until Cars, people liked to speculate that all the Pixar movies released at the time took place in the same universe, just at different places with different species, such as toys, bugs, fish, and monsters in another world. But then Cars came along and kind of messed that theory up, since we didn't have talking cars in Toy Story or The Incredibles. Since then, the Pixar theory has been in works, trying to find a way to connect all these stories together through a timeline. In 2013, John Negroni wrote The Pixar Theory, and it basically goes like this. First in Brave, where the magic to make animals and inanimate objects behave like humans is introduced. The witch in Brave is supposedly Boo from Monsters, Inc., trying to create magic to find Sully after the ending of Monsters, Inc. Next is The Incredibles. Superheroes exist to maintain order, but Syndrome creates large machines that can think on their own and decide to destroy their only threat, supers. Next is Toy Story. The first sign of life in toys is introduced. They need humans to survive. Then Toy Story 2 happens. The toys discover it's dangerous to be isolated from humans for too long. Next is Finding Nemo. Fish are incredibly advanced and humans are polluting the earth more human characteristics in animals. Ratatouille is next. Remy displays more human characteristics and is able to control Linguini. His rat clan do not approve of interacting with humans. Toy Story 3 happens. Carl and Ellie write to Andy telling him to get rid of his toys because they're aware of the animosity between toys and humans. Lotso even hates humans. He begins to lead a world of his own within the daycare. Up is next, where Carl is forced to move out because a company, BNL, is expanding. They're the ones responsible for the pollution of Earth. This leads to Cars and Cars 2. The events of Up and the rise of BNL leads to a war between man, animals, and machines. Animals won, but the machines helped the humans by sending them to space. Pollution rapidly increases. A thousand years later, Earth is inhabitable, but Wally manages to bring life back into Earth in the movie Wally. During the credits, we see a small plant growing in a shoe. The plant eventually grows into a mighty tree seen in A Bug's Life. No sign of humans at all, and the animals become the dominant species. Animals eventually evolve into monsters in the events of Monsters University and Monsters Inc. takes place. Monsters and machines begin to realize that they need humans to live, so they travel around the world to collect human screams for energy. This leads us back to Boo. That's all the time we have for this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to George's channel. You can check out my videos at youtube.com authentic.
But, but you know, like, no pressure. You don't have to. But I'd appreciate it. <laughs>